There is over $2 billion of positive investment coming to our neighborhood. More green space, housing, and innovative technology, all walking distance from our homes. We're really excited about that. We are hardworking people, and we want to enjoy what's coming. We don't want D DIBC to encroach into our neighborhood and move their truck plaza over. Please, please consider the damage that will come to our neighborhood. We need protection. We need a community agreement. Our future depends on you voting no on this land transfer today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Following, just, I just want to say council members, family and friends, are my, my community. We're a community at DIBC, Detroit International Bridge Company, is trying to destroy. My house is on one of the houses that is in their way of advancing their wall. Uh, we as a community should be standing up for each other here. I'm asking you, as our city council, on this vote, to vote no for this land transfer. It's a bad deal for us. We ask you to stick up for us and stand up with us against the bridge. I thank you all for listening to me. I still got 10 seconds, but thank you anyway. <laughs> thank you so much. Following Sergio Garcia will be May Mendoza. Good morning, honorable city council members. Uh, this is regarding the potential land transfer. And as it was stated before, this is not about a park. We all love our parks. This is about, this is about the consequences that the deal made in 2015 will have on the health and well-being of a neighborhood on Detroiters. Politically, you are better placed than anyone else to understand the history and dynamics in place that have permitted the bridge company to act above the law for decades, to be a neighbor without ethics, and engage in the premeditated destruction of neighborhoods whose residents are being sacrificed to build personal and corporate wealth. The 2015 deal does not need to be approved today. It is not legally obliged that you approve it today. Detroit must send a clear message to people and corporation that this is 2023. This is an era where Detroit residents' health and well-being comes first. You are the gatekeepers of our thriving and healthy future. Please do not approve this land transfer deal. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, the floor is yours. Hi, how are you? Um, thank you for having me here. I have to be made, I don't know, maybe... Just some a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. That's okay. Um, I really want this park to be made. I really enjoy it. I really uh, have a nice time there. My oldest son definitely loves the place. Um, I would like to see it be become a, a better project, a bigger project. It's definitely something that we can help in, in the city of Detroit. As someone who, who recently moved in, it's a beautiful city. It has something to, to bring to, to the world, right? Every, everybody is looking to it. And definitely these places are, are something that we as our citizens can go, can spend time there. Uh, but also the, the people who come here for tourism can come and have a really nice place to see instead of what the media sent to them and, and say that Detroit is this or that, right? We can find something beautiful inside the, the city, something to do here, something else beside maybe going to a plaza or something like that. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Arvalo. Arvalo. I apologize again if I mispronounced it. It's Mendoza. I speak in Spanish. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, bueno, yo apoyo al parque, al proyecto del parque Riverside. Um, me gustaría poderle brindar a mi futuro bebé un espacio en donde él pueda recrearse y también que existan más lugares como este y un lugar, un proyecto tan bonito como este que pueda alejar a nuestros jóvenes y a nuestros niños de las calles, en donde puedan recrearse y liberarse de las, las drogas y de todo lo malo que hay ¿no? en, en, en estas en esta sociedad. Entonces, apoyo, apoyo al parque. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Blanca, floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here to support the Rabbits. It's a very place to the Detroit children. And we can walk with the family uh, all afternoons or weekends and every day. Oh, it's a good place to ride in a bicycle with the family and 
etc. So I'm mother, I'm wife, and I want the best place to my family and my kids, or our kids of Detroit. So this part helped to the Detroit city development. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm so, good morning. Um, voy a hablar en español, en Spanish. El parque Riverside, la verdad, es inspirador después de que pasé, eh, después de que pasé con la enfermedad del COVID. El deporte ha sido mi mayor aliado y cada mañana paso con mi hermano a jugar un poquito de básquetbol. La verdad, completar el proyecto porque fomenta lo que es el deporte, la sana convivencia y en realidad este, muchas historias y sobre todo yo creo más que nada más por, por lo que está por venir. Lo único que puedo decir es que es, para mí es inspirador y me gustaría que se terminara el proyecto. Oh, ese proyecto. Eso es todo lo que puedo decir. Thank you so much. Following Alejandro Lopez will be Mary Carmen Munoz. Is this Carlos? Is this Carlos? Yes, yeah. yeah, Carlos is next. Buenos días, señores jurados. Este, va a ser en, en Spanish. Okay. Eh, de hecho, ahorita, eh, yo y mi hermano todos los días, como lo ha dicho anteriormente, este, jugamos todos los días. Como lo repitió mi hermano, fue por así un gran aliado sobre nosotros. ¿no? Lo considero algo especial para Detroit, ya que en este país pues, necesita eh, que la gente practique más deporte y sobre todo pues este proyecto pues puede ayudar a la comunidad de Michigan y sobre todo a muy cerca pues puede ser por así una un un under, este sobre todo jugar y re, tener una recreación para las personas y para las futuras generaciones Thank you. gracias Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair Member um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I said we had a translator here so I can understand what these residents are saying. We've had three residents to come and speak in Spanish. I just asked my colleague, did he understand what they were saying? He said, I don't speak Spanish. And I looked at him, I don't speak Spanish either. I think it's a disservice to have these residents who don't speak English fluently to come to this microphone and not have a translator. I want a translator, and I would like to hear from them. If you will allow me, Mr. Chair, I'd like to hear from those same three individuals who spoke in their language. We need a translator here. So I don't know if Member Gabby, um, Santiago, Santiago Romero needs to translate or do something so I can understand what they're saying. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It was know that the request for a translator is available for all of council members to make that request uh, during this particular uh, session, and that from any of us as council members. So I just want to make sure we put that on the record. Um, we will address whatever concerns we can in terms of member Santiago Romero, and I will give her the floor. They do available, um, but to your point here in person, it is very needed. I am keeping track. I do understand what they're saying. I was going to give opportunities. These, uh, time, Dave. Riverside Park. <laughs> My name is Ruben Romero. Okay, Buenos dias todos. Good morning, everyone, council members. Thank you, um, Madam Councilwoman Calloway, for bringing that up. I'm Mary Carmen Munoz. I'm the executive director for La Sed, Latin Americans for Social and Economic Development, the oldest Latino advocacy agency in Detroit. Thank you, Matt, uh, Councilwoman Calloway, for bringing up that valid point. Each of those uh, that spoke prior to me that spoke in Spanish, it took a lot of courage for them to come up to the podium today. And they, their voices do deserve to be heard. La said here it would like to speak on behalf of Riverside Park. This is something that should have been done many, many years ago. It was eight years that we've been waiting for this park. La Sede has tremendous work, amount of services sure in within our community, everything from a wonderful over. senior program to a fantastic youth after-school youth program and summer there, program, right? which would well, definitely benefit the from the finishing of this project. Muchas gracias, and thank you again, Chairwoman Calloway. I can't see that the, oh, that's, um, After Ramon Jackson will be Mr. Malik Shelton. Good morning, councilors. Good to see you again. Um, 
Mine and today is 221.23, and it's math. Baggage. And I was here today to brag so about the math that we put together. Each of you have a copy of our recently repeat, re uh, so completed report. Uh, we now know, every time I've spoken with council um, and when I've spoken with other elected officials or public officials, they want to know what the ask is. We now know what it will cost to solve the cost of climate in our community, and it's $1.5 billion. I was here to brag about the report today, but I think that what I've heard from my neighbors in other parts of the city requires us to right. step back and really well, take a look at the environmental the health of what's happening in our city. Whether you're downwind they, from Stellantis in the scourge of the bridge pride? or have sewage in your that's basements or your reason. canals, we my have pride. got to start, home, start taking care of the environmental years, health of our citizens. There for we years. see black and brown people and, who are and, being and literally so, okay, dumped on. Whether up, it's bad no air, asking, raw sewage, Rose Point Park just had their extreme emergency release valve right. to dump sewage so approved by the city. Got $3 million that can be park, and they were going to be in that park. Following Malik Shelton well, will be Michael oh, Kohler. I get you. Okay, I don't want it to go through because um, Irvin Corley they should make and the LPD department the issued a, a report full of lies. They should give us got about 15 municipal bonds refunding uh, and uh, revenue uh, bonds uh, that they're stated that don't require statutory uh, notices issued to the residents. You know, notices are a fundamental right. They are attached to due process, which is a 14th Amendment right. It's easy to disprove the LPD report that revenue bonds and refunding bonds don't require notice. So I'm, also, John Nagley came here and said the city of Detroit had under a billion dollars right. in debt. That we haven't had under a billion dollars in debt in right 50 top years. Of my head, right. That's full well, of lies. And it also contradicts a recent report he just published three weeks ago saying the city of Detroit had $2.2 billion in bond debt, $500 million down from last year, and $5 billion in overall debt. Let's get to the flow of this. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Following Michael Kohler will be Sean Nethercox. I would think so, yes. First of all, we just left Miller Canfield, the law firm, bond counsel for the city of Detroit. We just left there before we got here. They looked at us like we were Martians. They have no idea of where that information came that was in an LPD report that Miller Canfield said that refunding bonds do not require some type of public notice and that revenue bonds do not require a notice of intent as well as a right to referendum for the residents and taxpayers of this city. Fred Johal, cats out the bag. Just like you gave John Naglet all that time to blow smoke at your committee meeting, I'm asking you to give myself and Ramon Jackson. You can give us half the time that you gave John Naglet to address you at your committee meeting. Do we, can, you make, can you make that happen for us? I'm asking you. They should give. They should be Member Durham? there for the people. That well, well, before we do that, I want to allow you to, to complete your time. Okay. And your name again? My name okay. is Ruben Romero. Ruben Romero. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Thank President Pro Tem. Right. Right. Out of property, they close streets illegally. Nothing is ever done about that. Now, now they want to. The 24th, 23rd, 22nd, 21st Street, 14th Street and they have taken hundreds of houses to the detriment of our community. They have consistently delivered uh, community deficits instead of community benefits. The truck plaza now encroaches on St. Anne Church, the Detroit's founding church and the second oldest congregation in the United States. Um, I think it is well past time that the Detroit International Bridge deliver community benefits instead of community deficits. And what I'd like to see is no more encroach on St. Anne Street, no closing of that street, turning the property within Hubbard Richard back to residential use. All right, thank you so much. Charles Miles. Charles Miles. How you doing? My name is Charles Miles. I'm here again on behalf of my property taxes that's been paid since 2016 issues. Uh, I, have a, I have a document that I have given to 
and it clearly states that my taxes were paid by the city of Detroit, but I still receive, uh, yesterday, just yesterday, I just received the email from, um, We're here, but we at one time, we, uh, I think, line item your issue a for a committee. And lastly, um, another we could, a did you submit any information for us today that we can have so we can follow up with you? Do you have anything for us that okay. you can leave with our, um, my team here? Okay, and we will follow up with you to see if we can get a resolve, working with uh, Councilmember Young as well. All right, thank you so much. Um, let's see here. What's your name, sir? Manuel. Okay, go right ahead. Good morning, Council. I'm just here on behalf of the Riverside Park. I would love the park to be completed. I think that the, um, the, 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 the bridge really needs to um, deliver community benefits. Uh, it has always, and, um, for years and years, the benefits and years of the park delivered community have deficits. Been and I think just that any deal with this, not only for District the, Six members, for them to get that piece of the riverfront, the valuable you know, and necessary side, riverfront for side, all of us, is that they need um, to start providing some benefits and I would really to the community which they have the consistently of the, of the park, damaged um, and harmed. And just like well, Miss Munoz said, said um, it's been eight years. Absolutely um, I think not. It's finally, time for the okay. Deal. So, would the, if, if they vote this down, right, thank you. Not have to give back to Mr. Landon and the park and the work that's been done. I think that what they Good do morning, is they renegotiate it with President community Sheffield. benefits, and uh, the bridge particularly needs to be brought to, to bear there was about an the fact that it's a bad neighbor. It's been historically a very bad neighbor. The park. So they shouldn't be getting uh, benefits there seems to be when they continue to do harm. And so I think it just needs to be renegotiated. I don't think anybody wants to say no, no park. My or time even respected. not necessarily even no uh, bridge. That said, uh, I just want that. to but they have you piles and piles of rubble. They have cement to plants. To they have they, they, they knock down trees. They're doing damage, and, a campaign and they often do it without any uh, and uphold the integrity of a clearance. Was made by it's just time city for them to become good eight years ago to citizens. do this deal. Let's and finish so it. Let's get it done. Let's move on. I'm saying it's not a good deal without benefits to the community. Time does not permit. Thank you. There is a long history to be. All right. Thank you. Uh, John Love, followed by Michelle George. The microphone is placed so nobody can hear what they're saying. That's the unfortunate thing about this. It's just disrespectful to do this. And then on top of that, you got the uh, burglar alarm that goes off that's louder, and you cut the time by 30 seconds without any notification. That's impolite. Uh, or oh, I might as well talk about the rest. Uh, Carrera, uh, uh, Mick, the baseball player, get, got a quarter of a bill. You all know about the 50,000 tickets. You're involved in that distribution, I'm sure. Uh, but I doubt it because they don't do it. And it's an insult to you. It's an insult to the city. And it's insist too. Thank you, Mr. Love. Good morning, Council President Sheffield, Pro Tem, this honorable board. Happy New Year. Um, just want to hone in on my one minute. Just want to hone in. We, I know Council Member Young, if your daddy was here, your father, he would not allow that land bank here. And I know you fought against it as well. The land bank, get in this house. They spent over $12,000 in this home. Good morning, honorable body. Uh, my name is Sam Butler with the Hubbard Richard Residence Association. Thank you so much for the time. We are very concerned that the transfer of 3085 West Je Jefferson will have negative consequences for our neighborhood, including plaza expansion, blockbusting, and resident displacement. Their eventual hope to expand the plaza is not hyperbole. This has been stated fact. Under the leadership of President Sheffield and member Santiago Romero, we've been talking with the DIBC and those talks are making progress. I genuinely feel like we are close to a deal, but a vote to transfer the land today would undo all of that hard work. So all we are asking is that you give us more time that we can complete the land transfer. All we are asking is that you not transfer that property today without a community agreement in place. We have over a thousand, we have a petition that has been signed over a thousand times, a thousand signers that are asking you to not transfer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. May it please this honorable body. Um, my name is Todd Russell Perkins. I want to thank uh, your city councilwoman, Angela Callaway, 
for introducing me to uh, or asking me to come down citizenry about what to do and getting safe safely not only for the police officer but definitely for the person who's participating or getting that ticket or getting pulled over so i want to share all the way who's going to a school i want people to give them out we are just we just got these out there's a barcode on it and the barcode will list and be able to contact a lawyer if you have a complaint or you have need some follow-up or some guidance that's it that Yesterday, I went to uh, see Riverside Park on my way to the demonstration. I thought it was going to be there, but it was on St. Anne Street, on, right next to the wall, east of the wall. And um, so I, I uh, just want to say, then all of the speed bumps you put all over the city, it slows people down. I don't really, it didn't seem like it curtailed people going to that park, and it is I didn't even recognize it. Years ago, I went across and landed there with an inner tube from Canada, and uh, but it's totally different. And uh, years ago, Maddie Maroon put up a sign saying, keep out Homeland Security. That was a lie. That wasn't Homeland Security. You won't know this because it's not in your minutes because you don't keep minutes. All right, thank and you, I re-listened for an hour and a half last night trying to re-listen to you, the Ms. planning Dara. Ms. Dara, Ms. Dara, I mean, <laughs> that's your time. Ms. Dara. Thank you so much, Ms. Ms. Dara. That's your time. Continue, Ms. Dara. We will we will have to escort you out of the auditorium, Ms. Dara. Ms. Ms. Da Ms. Dara. Ms. Dara. Candice, and can you pronounce your last name? I'm sorry, Ms. Candice. Temoko. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, we have Jerome Record. Um, hello, my name is Candace Tamaclo, and this is Angela Blocker Lloyd. We are the founders and skating directors for Dream Detroit Skating Academy, where the, we skate at the Jack Adams Memorial Ice Arena, which is a part of the Adam Futzel Rec Center. And currently, we are off of the ice due to machinery issues at the rink. Um, this is the the second time in the last 60 days that we have been off the ice for a total of three weeks. Um, both Angela and I started skating at Jack Adams back in the 90s, and while a lot of renovations have been done to the center and to the rink, little has appeared to ask for those funds, that those funds be allocated to that center because it is the only ice arena in the city of Detroit, and we are trying to introduce figure skating to black and brown youth in the city, and that's difficult when we don't have the ice, the suburbs, <laughs> yes, to get those yes, lessons. So. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all the work that you all do. Um, I was there at your opening yes. that you all had, along with Councilmember uh, Callaway. I think others attended as well, too, and truly support the work of girls out there on the ice uh, learning how to ice skate. And so I definitely want to make sure you all have the opportunity to, to uh, open the eyes for young people in this uh, arena. And so what we can do, Mr. Clark, if you can line item, uh, this is at the Adams Bledsoe Center, correct? Yep, if you can line item that particular um, rec center for a status update on the machinery that was mentioned today, and then we can follow up with the department as well, too. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. keep up the great work. Madam Chair. <laughs> ladies, Madam Chair. Yes. Ladies, ladies, if you could come this way, this is my information as well, because that is in District 2, my district that I represent on this council. So make sure you um, exchange information with Ms. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Record. Good morning, everyone. I just want to say hello to here today. I provided you all with some information about our Internet Essentials Program, which is high-speed Internet for eligible families at low monthly prices. Um, when you couple that with the federal subnet to individuals in the city of Detroit. So I want to be encouraged that we all work together as a community to uh, mend this digital divide. Um, Comcast will be supporting now, uh, more or less sign people up for Internet Essentials and help people connect to the Internet uh, Affordable Connectivity Program. But thank you all for your time today. You all have a good day. Thank you. Hey, thank you. You as well, Jerome. Madam Chair. Madam President. Madam Chair. Yes. Member, Member Santiago. Madam Remember? Chair. Hold on one second. Right. Thank Member, you. Member Santiago Romero, followed by Member Calloway. Comments. Um, you weren't here, but I did want to briefly share and thank Member Calloway for 
Um, acknowledging the need for us to have Spanish translation, I would also urge Arabic translation. We have a high population of Span Spanish and Arabic speakers, and I have been asking for translation services again since I got here. It is nice to not be the only council member asking for these, um, which I support, and I do want to speak to you all. Gracias por los que vinieron hoy a hablar con nosotros. Estoy con ustedes, los escucho. Me da mucho orgullo que están aquí hablando en nuestro idioma, pidiendo por apoyo. Um, yo estoy aquí para ayudarlos, también para, para terminar el parque, pero también estoy aquí para cuidar nuestra salud. Y para, para que vean, no, no sé si pueden ver esta foto, pero esta foto es Zug Island y esta foto es por el puente. Y ahorita lo que estamos respirando, lo que respiran sus hijos y, lo, y, y, y sus bebés es contaminación con, um, de, los, de los camiones. Entonces, lo que yo les pido a ustedes es que me ayuden a mí a ayudarles a ustedes, a ayudarles a nuestros vecinos a respirar aire limpio, a, a terminar este parque, pero en una manera donde estamos protegiendo nuestra salud. What I just told my residents is that I'm here in support of them. I support them, I support the park, but what we are breathing next to these bridges is contamination and pollution. And what we're fighting here today is not the, fun, the, the completion of the park, it is the health and well-being of our residents, of everyone that comes to visit Riverside Park. So I am with you, let's finish this park, but let's protect our residents as well. Here, they are on, uh, we've never had a person um, and so I don't think we can look into whether or not they are available uh, in person. But again, council members can also request as well. I know money was allocated for us to have that. Yeah. Right, and staff can see if he is on. Okay. Madam Chair. All right, so we will continue to look into that and work on that. Yes, Member Calloway. Um, thank you. I did a live translator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, and we, and Member Calloway, that's not a, no, no issue. We have no issue with that. I think we can just talk offline and make sure that we coordinate it and get it set up so that it's done. I mean, it's no, no fight or no tension there. I mean, I think yeah. we all want to make sure everyone um, right. can hear the same. But I was just letting okay. you, everybody you know so that I received a text message from Ms. Gail Fulton from the administration saying that we can have a live translator here in the auditorium in the future if we request Sounds it. Sounds good. Thank so, you, um, thank so, you, Madam so Chair. So myself or council members can make sure that we yeah. public comment. And so those who are joining us virtually, uh, Mr. Ari Ruttenberg, how many hands do we have? Put, um, and how you prioritize the various um, requests. Um, and so this is a huge amount that we're appropriating to sidewalk repair, um, more than we have done so before. And so I just want to make sure that the requests are handled in an equitable way, right? That not certain districts are left out, people who have been waiting for quite some time, that they that it's a, it's a streamlined process that actually prioritizes individuals who have put these requests in in a, in a, in a fair way. Public farms, you've got car mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, for those comments. And I'm of course, uh, the input from council uh, is going to be a part of the overall program. Uh, and once the funding is in place, you know, I, I look forward to being able to work to move with ahead uh, each of the individuals in that group as we go about the development program this year. And I think the Rick Watson also alludes to the fact that in the past, we were limited to the fact that the only building that they can offer is a portion of the city for sidewalk repair. And we didn't have the latitude to address some of these situations that we'll be able to this year. All right, all right. Thank you so much, um, Director Brundage, for uh, being here and looking forward to working with you on the rollout of this particular um, program and also uh, being responsive to the requests from council members uh, if they submit um, additional concerns on behalf of their constituents as it relates to sidewalk repairs as well. Um, any additional? Yep, any additional questions? Yes, Member uh, Waters. All right, thank you. Um, I'm not sure so, that I would say um, revert to it good, all back. Good afternoon, Mr. I would Brundage. say find the extra I just want to ask you, um, it seems to me that the there's certainly a, a lot of money that's going to be spent. To uh, so have you um, has submitted, uh, have you placed a, uh, an RFP out there already? Um, do we have a list of uh, a really Detroit actor, companies who are able and prepared to do uh, all of this work? Do the chair from the waters. Uh, we, we have finalized the EPA documents. Well, they're dealing with $5 million. Uh, we want to wait for the court to start off the uh, process. And then we're going to see if we get it. They were supposed uh, to get it. We do anticipate putting the EPA down before the end of this month. We're going to sit down and anticipate the EPA down before the end of this month. And then the city is supposed to give them 
Uh, when we were ready to begin our now construction this deal doesn't on mid April. This deal uh, we will have the, the day of uh, the we are anticipating contracts that will give us the flexibility to be multiple so order. Let's wait. Uh, and, and, you know, we've reached out in the past to they need to uh, Detroit and especially to our own company. Uh, you know, to participate in Renegotiate it to make sure that our neighborhood uh, has some construct. kind of guarantees and some benefits right. where thank you, Madam they are not going to right, thank you. Um, Member Benson. decimate our neighborhood. All right, thank you. I mean, um, seen what they thank in, you all in, for uh, uh, being here this morning to speak on this issue. Yeah, so I'd also like a couple well, questions regarding the uh, sidewalk uh, appropriation. Uh, sure, our residents are going to be thrilled to know that they're going to be getting new sidewalks, especially since um, typically the city doesn't do that. Can you just put in sidewalks versus new roads versus any other item where DPW could see improvements or investment in our neighborhoods? Uh, through the chair, uh, as I was indicated earlier, uh, was to do is for the first time address some of those sidewalks that we couldn't legally address. Uh, with restrictions that are in place for the street miles. Okay, and just knowing that we have a number of um, challenges as well as ask and, and any comments on how you would like to proceed with your motion, or you want to keep it on the floor? Oh, how I want to proceed with the motion. I can't say anything else. Go right ahead, Mom, okay. on the topic of bringing I, it back in one minute. It, it's just that, you know, budgets. Health, safety, and welfare to the public. I would just like a brief explanation as to how so. This is for the Detroit Regional Convention Facility Authorization. All right, Mr. Washington, if you can please come on. Colton, from the City Planning Commission. Council President Pro Tem Tate, a resolution, line item 17.2. Uh, President Pro Tem Tate. Madam President, move approval, line item 17.2, please. All right, motion has been made for approval, and this is for our 2023 start tomorrow. Uh, any discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, a motion has been made for approval for our schedule. Mr. Todd, I do see you have joined us. Did you have anything you would like to He is frozen. Um, and colleagues, this is just the schedule. I think there was a date change on Friday. Okay, thank you. All right, hearing no further discussion, um, motion has been made for approval. Are there any objections? Point three, please. Motion has been made for approval. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the one resolution will be approved <coughs> from the Planning and Development Department. Council President Pro Tem Tate, a resolution, line item 17.4. President Pro Tem Tate. Our president, move approval of line item 17.4, noting that the recommendation from the committee was to deny. All right, I'm move for a discussion. With discussion. I'm assuming that uh, members would like to speak on this line item. Uh, I think we've been joined by the law department. Mr. Maroon is here. Um, and so before we turn to committee members who have already heard this statement, but I did want to share our efforts. Residents who live in Hub River Shard, directly next to Riverside Park and the Ambassador Bridge, have been meeting with the Detroit International Bridge Company since September of last year regarding the 3085 West Jefferson. These conversations have been promising, but, and, but the, a mutually agreeable measure to preserve one of the Detroit's oldest neighborhoods and protect families that call it home has yet to be reached. My office and I have been a part of these conversations to amplify frontline residents' concerns and to help work towards an agreement that would address the concerns of community and their feelings that their neighborhood is being taken over and that their feelings regarding their health and safety are an afterthought. Residents in the immediate community do not yet feel an agreement has been reached that provides sufficient assurances to prevent land use changes that would adversely impact their health and the fabric of the neighborhood. Further and alarming, residents know that DIBC has plans to acquire more properties, displacing residents, and the desire to close St. Anne Street between Lafayette and Ford Streets. The fact is that DIBC has told residents that they are likely to expand their customs plaza, and a discussed LEA is stated to be for a future second span. Therefore, for the final land swap to proceed, the community is calling for an agreement that includes, one, that DIBC transfers its properties on St. Anne Street to a community land trust. Two, that DIBC transfers a handful of properties that it's in its interior of Hubbard Richard to a community land trust. And three, a guarantee that the DIBC will enter into its own community benefits agreements if and when there is a second span to be built. 
This is not whether or not I support or anyone supports Riverside Park. We all do. I love Riverside Park. I go there often, and I was a part of the advisory community, uh, advisory committee. But before we complete this deal to finalize our world-class park, we need to ensure Hubbard Richard residents have world-class protections. This isn't about a park. By the way, if you were to go there right now, you could enjoy it in all its glory. Whenever someone calls in to say we need to complete the park, what they're really saying is we need to complete a parking lot. Yes, let's finish a park. Let's use the resources readily available to us, and let's build something beautiful for Detroit because we deserve nice things. But we also deserve to live in healthy and thriving communities, not ones that are bombarded by truck traffic, pollution, noise, and other adverse, adverse effects to our residents in the impacted area that, are, that have been dealing with this and will continue to endure this if we do not settle on protections with the DIBC. We have a lot of investment coming to this area of the city. There is the rebirth of Central Station. There are hotels, there are apartments, there are residents being developed near, uh, restaurants being developed near the river. We all want green spaces. These spaces should be safe, clean, and in healthy environments. We all support Riverside Park. But those that are calling in support of the park are failing to mention the current negative environmental impacts caused by the amounts of truck traffic that we receive due to the Ambassador Bridge. I have shared with my colleagues images of the current pollution due to bridge diesel fumes of the more than 10,000 trucks in the neighborhood. I also want to note that the city needs to pass a truck route ordinance and a fugitive dust ordinance to support the safety and residents of our city. This is not just about the health and well-being of my residents in Hubbard Richard in Southwest Detroit. This is about the health and safety of all residents who, who visit the river across the city. Yes, including districts one, two, three, four, five, and seven. This is about protecting visitors who come to our river and parks from across the state and across the country. This, there is a petition where we have almost 800 residents from across the city with cities of codes urging us to vote no unless we finalize an agreement with DIBC. I wanted to be able to say today that we are close to completing a private community agreement, but unfortunately, I believe we need more time and, a, and more will in order to do so. I am respectfully asking my colleagues to vote no on this land deal unless DIBC is willing to complete our process that will yield a community agreement. The 2015 LEA is valid for 25 years, meaning that the DIBC can continue to come to council to ask us to vote on this land swap again, which I want to do, but only if we allow residents more time to negotiate an agreement with them that centers their lives and well-being. How you, how we, how we vote on this matter will directly impact the circumstances and quality of life of my residents and everyone who visits Riverside Park. I am not here to fight a park. With us that would like to come up as we um, start this discussion, Mr. Russell, and um, I think someone from the law department probably should be on as well. And uh, Mr. Uh, Brad Dick, I do see you as well. If you can just hold on for one second, please. Just press the button at the, on the actual microphone. Yep. Okay. Good, good afternoon. I am Crystal Perkins. I'm Deputy Director of the General Services Department. And I'm just here to um, just talk a little bit of background about the uh, agreement between the City of Detroit and the, um, the Maroons. The, um, in 2015, as we know, the City Council agreed for the exchange of roughly about 3.78 acres of land for about 4.71 acres of land. And in exchange, we receive um, prime realty that's um, off the water. Now, um, a lot of amenities have been um, added to this location because of the Maroons keeping up their part of the agreement, which is like the basketball courts, the soccer field, the restroom facilities. The completion does not only include the parking lot, but it also includes the um, boat, la boat launch um, a fisherman's wharf, including in the parking lot, but also uh, bird meadows with a fishing area. And then there's going to be playscapes with some um, aquatic amenities as well. So that's the second phase for the completion of the agreement that was done in 2015. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Come up as well. And I, I just want to thank all of the uh, community members that have come down. Also, member. Uh, Santiago Ramiro, your work on, on this. I know our office has been in some of those conversations trying to bring everyone together. Um, and I think that, yes, Member Young, I see you. Can you no, just let me finish? Want, you know, yep. to ask, to ask yep, she can come back up to... as soon as I finish okay, speaking. Okay. Yep. Right, then you can have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, I just wanted to personally thank uh, the work that has been put into this to date by our council member. Also, I know the bridge company has uh, come to the table to try to negotiate some type of community benefits for uh, the community. I just want to state where I am that I, I am torn on the fact that we do have some legal obligations obligations uh, in this particular agreement that is before us. But I will say that I am hopeful that we can come to an agreement because I've been in some of these negotiations with uh, the bridge company in the community. And so I would like you, Maroon, as you uh, make your statement, if you can share some of the agreements that you all have reached to date, um, some progress that may have been made, uh, and maybe some of the things that are also outstanding as well. As you uh, make your comments and then number young, we will come back to uh, the previous speaker. Thank you. Uh, Matt Maroon, uh, council members, council president, thank you for the opportunity to request that you vote to complete the agreement on Riverside Park. I too would like to see Riverside Park become world class. It certainly sits right next to a world class bridge. I think the two should go together quite nicely. I need to bring up the history for a minute on Riverside Park and the agreement. My company, my family, we were not getting along with the city very well at all. There was lots of acrimony. There was hard feelings. It was 2014, early 2015. No cooperation either way. And an opportunity came up to deal with Riverside Park, an otherwise dead park in the city and an opportunity for us to acquire three acres under the shadow of the bridge. Many things happened. I met with the mayor's office. I met with city councilors. We had a number of public meetings. Uh, many folks attended those public meetings, and it wasn't always fun. But we crafted an agreement, an agreement that talked about all the items that me and my company had to do and had to do first. As a businessman, that was against all the training that I'd ever received. But if you're going to break the cycle and develop a good relationship or start to develop a good relationship instead of one that was filled with anger and hostility, somebody's got to step out. So I decided to take the risk and do that. And I went first. And City Council passed the agreement, and I started work. We conveyed five, immediately we conveyed five acres of riverfront property to the city. We removed a tenant that was paying us good rent in a warehouse along the waterfront. We demolished the warehouse. We transferred $3 million to the city for the park improvements that have occurred today. We put a thousand windows in the train station to the tune of four point something million dollars. Selfishly, that turned out good for me. Sold the depot to Ford Motor Company. I think it turned out very well for the city, too. And Fantastic for Ford. What a gem. No one, no one has any argument that me and my company haven't lived up to every item in the agreement. We have honored our commitment. What I'm asking you today to do is to honor the city side of the agreement. I've done my part. Now, I realize that there are other matters, and there will always be other matters in the city that my companies or the bridge company is involved with that have nothing to do with Riverside Park. And I pledge to you that there are good, positive outcomes to be had in those other matters, whether it's Hubbard Richard or... or 14th Street or some development in, in an east side district, 
I pledge to you that I will work with you on those things. But I made a mistake in allowing Riverside Park Agreement to be held up in exchange for talks on another agreement. And I think that the question that needs to be asked is why would I enter into a new agreement until this agreement is honored? I've been to a number of city council meetings, and I know if the shoe was on the other foot and I was coming to you with a new proposal, one of the very first questions that someone on council would ask is, has this developer completed all of the agreements and all of the stipulations that they've already agreed to? Because if they haven't done that, we're not going to take up a new agreement with them. I know that's the fact. I've heard it countless times. So yes, I'm happy to engage in talking about other agreements. I'm happy to do that. And I think there's some very positive outcomes that can be reached. But I don't want to engage in talks of another agreement while this one is still outstanding and being held hostage. I need this agreement to be completed. The city needs it to be completed. And yes, then we can get on with something else. But to threaten this agreement indirectly or directly and the city's obligation to make good on it in hopes that I agree to something else or I get leveraged into something else is not proper. And I believe there's so many good things that have already happened with the Riverside Park Agreement. Park is not a dead park. It's a beautiful park. The $2 million would only do even more for it. And it would, and it built, it could, I can build on that relationship with the city that's not filled with acrimony and hard feelings. We've accomplished some very good things together. But I look forward to, to working on things with, whether it's Hubbard Richard community or anything else. But I need this agreement done first. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we can open it now for uh, questions from my colleague, member Santiago Ramiro, followed by council member Young. I think fortunately, it's not enough to just want to say we're gonna be able to pass this today and work towards an agreement. Um, there are still a number of things um, that the company is doing um, that is not, in, is not favorable for community members. One of those being illegal operations on parcels that are zoned residential or mixed use. Um, there has been, I have been told that the, that the Ambassador Port Corp, which is operated by the Maroon, still owe over a million dollars in unpaid bills and drainage fees. So I understand that you may have done what you had to do for this agreement that was made with the mayor, not with community, but with the administration, that you've done your due diligence on, on that end, but there is still a history and there are still many things that continue to negatively impact residents where it's hard to believe your word to be able to move this forward without an agreement. And I'm sorry to hold, as you say, this hostage, but is the only leverage that we have, given that this land deal is literally written for a second bridge, another span. And when your company has told us you are looking to displace residents, block bust, and close St. Anne Street. So I, I hear you, I understand, but I am working off of what I know to be true, the history of the company, the current status of, of how you manage to do business in, in the district and across the city, and it being very hard to believe that if we were to pass this today, it would actually be working with us in coming up with any kind of protections for residents. This isn't unfortunately something that we can take your, your word by. It, it, this is a process that I'm trying to follow to ensure protections for residents. And are you saying then that moving today, you are not willing to continue to meet with residents for us to finalize an agreement? You're, you're hoping that council just vote this up or down today? Through the, through the chair. Through the chair, yeah. m m council president, to you, okay, to Maddie. Answer. Yes, Mr. Maroon. All right. Always willing to talk. 
but why would I enter into another agreement before this one is lived up to? You wouldn't. Thank you. Um, member Young, followed by Member Dunn. Stronger one for Ms. Perkins. Uh, I, I just want she can still come back up, too. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for your uh, testimony, uh, Mr. Maroon. I just, I, first of all, let me say this. This is not the way I would have done business. Um, I personally think that if this is something that was, obviously something is needed, obviously something this is what the community wanted, I think that this is something that should have been negotiated up front in the deal. Now, I wasn't there. I just came on the council. I don't know what happened. Um, from my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there, you said yourself there was conversations uh, previously. I think there were some things that you did agree to. Um, I personally think, because I'm okay, because the way, the way I operate is if, you, if everybody can go home with a win, let's go home with a win. Take what the defense gives you. And so I think there's an opportunity here for us to be able to at least agree, at least put forth what we agree on. Because from what my understanding was, we were 66% of the way there. Because you're not going to get everything in life. That's not how it works. I agree with you. But I think that if we can at least go home with the community got some of what they wanted, we can make this a better deal where everybody can go home with something. Is that something that you would be open to at all? Counselor, I'm very open. Very open. That's to part it. of the right, and, and what we're I, going on now. And I and I can't I can't present to you better evidence than the fact that in the Riverside Park deal, I did everything first. So any hesitancy that I won't be interested in in listening or making a, a deal at, with Harvard Richard or some other matter. Look at the evidence. Before the city did anything, I transferred $3 million. Before the city did anything, I put in 1,000 windows in the depot. Before the city did anything, I kicked out a tenant and tore down the warehouse. I've done all these things first. So now you ask me if I won't, if I won't in good faith work on something after this deal is done. I will. I promise. I promise. And I've got a good track record now. But before I enter into a new agreement, I have to request that the city finish its part on the agreement that I already have. Excuse me, my problem. Listen, I understand what you're saying. And I get that we're asking you more than was in the original agreement. And like you, I don't like when people change the deal at the closing table. I get only surprises I like are on my birthday. I okay. get that. Good. But I just think it would be in my mind if we didn't do everything we could to at least meet people halfway. Now, again, I'm not, now I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. I understand this unfairity. I'm not saying this is fair to you at all. I get that. And you make a legitimate point. You've done everything that you did under the agreement. And I understand this could have happened before you got to this point. I'll just say it again, just from a perspective of it just seems that we're two-thirds of the way there to me. I will two thirds of something is better than 100% of nothing. And, and let me say this the reason why I support this is because, one, the reason why Riverside Park, despite the people loving the park, is such a great attraction is because the park that used to be a great attraction was Belle Isle. Mm -hmm. And what happened was when the state started managing, managing Belle Isle, there was a crackdown by Michigan State Police. And so a lot of people who were going to that park, and looking for refuge, got arrested and got harassed. Mm -hmm. And so to avoid that, now they go to Riverside Park and these other local parks because of that. So this is the last refuge for a lot of people. And this is one of the few things that we all as Detroiters and Michiganders and Americans do together. And so I understand that this is a different negotiation. I understand this is a different deal. But I just personally think that it's very rare we have an opportunity Every, especially in politics, where everybody could go home with something. And so I would just, I, I, I would just, I would just implore. I'm not saying you have to do it, but I would just implore you. I, I'm almost Good. begging you to Good. at least reconsider at least going two thirds of the way before we, before we vote this up. And I'm done. Thank, Thank you. you, Member Young. Counselor, you, 
But if everybody goes home with something, I'd like to go home with the first thing. I got okay? you. Okay. I got right? you. Right? The, that's all. So just to, to, to member Young's point, and so taking place. Yes. As relates to this agreement. Yes. And I think it would be helpful maybe to share, I mean, some compromises that have been made, some commitments that your company has made. From my understanding, two out of the three uh, proposals from the council member have been agreed upon, is, if I'm not mistaken. One of which was you are willing to enter into a community benefits agreement if, in fact, a second span mm -hmm. is built. Uh, the second one was around down, down zoning some properties and that there was just one outstanding issue that we have not been able to agree upon and that is the transfer of properties around St. Anne Street, which we're almost there, but we just can't get to that one part. Yep. And so just to, to commend you know, both of you all, I mean, there has been some compromise on both ends, and I think someone should speak to some negotiations right. and what have came out, come out of that so that the public is aware that there has been some compromises and negotiations that have taken place to date. Council President, I, I stand corrected. You're right. I've already agreed to some things. You're, you're right, even, even without uh, the completion of this agreement. So at first, there was a concern that, well, what if you build a new bridge? Well, we're not going to build a new bridge, okay? But what if you do anyways? Well, we made an agreement already done on top of this agreement that says if we, before we do, there's a series of public meetings and community meetings that we'll have to deal with and, and deal with appropriately before that could even take place. So that's already done. And you're right, there's been other discussions where we've talked about where we've been asked to, to trade away some lots that we own uh, in the hubbard Richard community. And I think that's a possibility. I think we could, I think we're very close on that. I think all those things are great, but it's not proper to take the one thing that remains out of the Riverside Park Agreement, the only thing that my company is supposed to get, and hold that up as leverage, why can't we talk on even footing about the next agreement after this one is done. Why, do, why is it necessary to hold up the first one as leverage over those discussions? It's not proper. I don't want to use the word legal or illegal around the lawyers, but it's not proper. I want to get this one done. All right, thank you. And before I know, everyone probably has comments. Uh, Corporation Council, again, on if we are to vote it thank down. Um, and I just want to know today, uh, to require that they go back into negotiations, that the court would then come back and say uh, there was a breach of contract and order specific performance, which would mean that it would come back to us for a vote, but it would not say that we have to vote a certain way, right? We just have our obligations as council members to do our jobs. So it would just be back before us again for a vote. Is that correct? Or if you can explain right. so, the process. Council President Conrad Mallet, Corporation Council, I appreciate the opportunity. This is um, an interesting moment. The discussion that we have had regularly is what would happen if a judge ordered specific performance. Mm -hmm. Focus just on that. What the judge would order is for this council to place back on the agenda the land exchange agreement for approval. I doubt very seriously if a judge is going to order an outcome and take away the decision from the legislative body. There is a different, however, set of circumstances that might arise. Suppose, and I, and I really, really hesitate to bring this up because I don't represent uh, the bridge company. They've got their own lawyers there. But suppose the bridge company were, under different leadership, go into court and say, Your Honor, we consider the moment that we're in with the city of Detroit to be in breach. We believe that the city's consistent failure, consistent failure to do that which it is obligated to do based on the agreement that it signed where every condition precedent has been met, that the city is in breach. And rather, Your Honor, than us speculate on the damages that we have suffered, we want to, in fact, be returned to our original positions. Your Honor, we want restitution 
and we want the return of that which belongs to us. Now, were that to be the case, I would present for the judge a very interesting opportunity. One, the city would keep the 3.7 acres that has yet to be transferred to the bridge company. Two, the 4.71 acres uh, that the GSD and Ms. Perkins made reference to, the judge could order that be returned. The interesting question that I've got and still don't know the answer to is what about the building that was torn down? What about the tenants that were dismissed? What about all the costs associated with making the land environmentally appropriate? What about all of those costs? In fact, how do you return the bridge company back to its original position? And so on top of, of the question as to damages, on top of the question of restitution, then you have the judge then getting a list of all of the costs that the bridge company in, uh, incurred and figuring out damages based on the statutes that exist in the state of Michigan and something called the law of damages that is uh, uh, just a part and parcel of the restatement uh, of contracts. So this is an interesting moment. This is a moment where if, if a different decision by a different set of representatives from the bridge company were simply to say that the avenue chosen by the current leadership uh, has not gotten us as far as we would like, the city has shown regularly, regularly over the course of the last 14 months that it is not interested in completing this transaction and would argue to the judge that there has therefore been a breach and recognizing uh, the ineffectiveness of specific performance, then the bridge company might argue that we simply would like to take our toys and go home. Now there, Madam President, I think you have a very, very different set of circumstances. I think there we have a very difficult position to defend. And I think that the direct pathway out of all of these various hypotheticals uh, is to recognize what has been said by Ms. Perkins and to accept the fact that the bridge company has delivered on each one of the promises that the land exchange agreement required. Every step that the agreement said should be taken has been accomplished. We, the city of Detroit, collectively we are the ones who have failed to keep our word. Seems to me that in order to not deal with hypotheticals, there is a direct pathway forward. It does not require speculation. Uh, you have in front of you an opportunity, in fact, to uh, close this transaction out, uh, not, in fact, mix one uh, opportunity with another, uh, and the idea that we would use this contract as leverage for one thing over another, uh, really, uh, that is really not the way that you would expect of the law department to uh, direct that we do business. Thank you. So that's thank my you. answer. Yes, thank, thank you, Corporation Council. I'm going to turn it over to members now, starting with Member Durhall, followed by uh, Member Johnson was first. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, it's been a long day. Member Johnson. Not intentional. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. President. Uh, um, I, I actually have a question for Mr. Maroon. I, I, information, I'm not sure who you were just counseling, um, but appreciate <laughs> the information you provided. Uh, Mr. Maroon, so my ears perked up when you said something about uh, something happening on the east side. That, But I am wondering because I was not privy to what happened in 2015 because I was not here. Um, so I'm trying to, I, I think what happens is we do a disservice to ourselves by not bringing council members up to speed who were not here to understand what transpired and where we are today. Um, I, I'm pretty sure there was a plan that you had that you wanted to move forward on as a relate agree to provide to you. I understand that you've done a number of things 
Um, and, and so this is the plan for the land because when we sit in the Planning and Economic Development Committee, I, there are no, numerous times when I've asked for something to be brought back so that I could reach out to, I, and I don't, I, I really am not interested in hearing about if this happens, that's going to happen, but what are you planning to do with the land? Uh, the land would be used exclusively for buffer and maintenance of the existing bridge between the park and the bridge. It's a long, narrow strip that runs from uh, Jefferson Avenue to the river. It's uh, 200 foot wide. It's a, it's a runway. So again, what are you planning to do with the land? Because the land already exists. So are you putting some tree? You're doing something there for it to create a buffer because it's already a buffer in essence, right? It, it is. It's just that my company doesn't own it yet. That's all. It, it probably wouldn't look much different than it does now. Maybe we'd pretty it up a bit. And you can understand any environmental concerns that residents have? With, with regards to that land, Counselor? Yes. Uh, that, that land is, uh, is somewhat contaminated. There was a former Detroit gas gasification plant on that property, uh, as there was part of Riverside Park, and DTE did a, did a large cleanup there, and I think the property is supposedly fine now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Member Johnson. Member Durhoff. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so just wrapping my thoughts in my head uh, about this one. Having I had the opportunity to represent a piece of Southwest Detroit at one time, uh, know a lot of the residents down there know a lot of the movement uh, relative to uh, addressing some of the concerns and issues of residents, whether they be environmental or otherwise. I guess my major concern that I have, and I've stated this even in committee, uh, is obligation. Since I've been here, since we've been here from the beginning of this term, I have heard council members sit up here and admonish folks that we contract with for not meeting their obligations upon when we contract with them. Yet on the flip side of the coin, uh, when we have a contract such as such now or an agreement as such, uh, and uh, a couple of times, talked to him on the phone as well and said, look, you guys got a bad, bad, bad reputation in the community. Um, it is imperative for you to work on that because I'm sick and tired of every deal that comes before us dealing with the bridge company ending, you know, unfortunately, like we are seeing here today. And so I, I challenged him to, you know, and his, his team to sit down with the community. Uh, I will commend him and his team for doing just that. Um, I have not personally, and as the chair, I've, I've taken myself out of the process purposefully because I did not want to sway uh, things any one way or, or the other, though I have my personal feelings. Um, and I wanted the community and the bridge company to actually have earnest conversations. Hopefully, you know, take politicians out of it, take, you know, all this other stuff out, but the community. And I saw that actually take place. So I, I don't want us to miss that, um, that sentiment. And so I would district council member, I know the challenges of, of, of meeting the expectation of the residents that supported you, that voted for you, put you in office and expect you to uh, get across the threshold, the things that they have, um, that they hold so dearly, especially, you know, I, I voted to support again, my colleague, uh, for a, a motion to deny, uh, in committee. And I, I stand with her today on that. And I deal that, uh, we can get back to the table um, and come up with something that works on behalf of everyone. But I, I will agree. Uh, well, let me not say I will agree. I'll just echo the statements that I said uh, during committee that there has to be a breaking down of the walls, melting of the ice. Um, because what I heard today, you know, still feels like it's very, very cold and frigid, um, though there has been some movement. I think there's definitely an opportunity for some additional uh, collaboration and cooperation because, you know, as been mentioned, 
This is not the only deal that's going to come before this body uh, dealing with the bridge company. This is not the only deal that's going to come uh, before this body that member Santiago Romero may uh, disagree with. Uh, but this one here today, I think, based on the, 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 the conversations that I heard and where we are, and it's frustrating a bit to only hear, to Madam President's point, what in the heck do we agree on? And nobody's really talking about that. We've got to, like, search and find all the things that, we, that, that, that have come to some agreement. Let's start there and build out. And there may be still some areas where we won't agree, but at least we can have a true, honest, and earnest conversation and, and, and build on relationships. Vincent. Thank you very much to the community that came out and my colleague for doing the heavy lifting to get us to this point. Um, full transparency as well. I sat on the Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee when we had these debates a couple of years ago. And for full transparency, I also supported that deal based on the fact that the city needs to perform. And so, but this is also a very nuanced deal. This is not just cut and dry. You have a community that has been harmed. There have been egregious harms and there has been terrible behavior um, by one of the actors here as well. But what you also have is that you have an actor who has gone first into the water and has performed. At a certain point, our word has to mean something. But we also need to hear the community and honor their request. And so when I see the community come out, when I see my colleague doing the heavy lifting, doing the hard work, and then when I get to the table, when I hear that there are, they are 66% of the way there, so two out of three of the items have been agreed upon. Now, if I were in the same shoes, and this was my deal, I would feel a certain way. If I had performed, I had done my end of the bargain, and then someone inserted themselves into the deal and said, hey, let's make some changes before you agree to the deal. Not sure that's how we want to do business at the city of Detroit, but I also understand that the community has some concerns, and this is also a nuanced deal. So what I am hoping is that we can get to a point where the community feels that it has the protections it needs, but I'm also interested in what is that last item? Maybe I missed it. What was the last item that was not agreed upon? Madam President, it is properties along St. Anne, um, properties in the inner um, Hubbard-Richard area, mm -hmm. and then uh, in, in agreements for a, um, a, a voluntary community benefits process. It was okay. those three things, and we, we're, we're trying to finalize the properties that are being transferred. Okay. And just for full transparency as well, on the last time this came to this table, my office submitted a memo hearing the concerns of the community requesting a resolution by this body that would demand a community benefits. Of we are in breach of the contract. We have had 14 months to consider whether or not all of the things done by the bridge company, in fact, meet terms and conditions. They do. Uh, so if you look at it uh, 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 directly, uh, clearly, we have reached the point where we have not met a legal obligation mm -hmm. that we have to the bridge company. That is the classic definition of breach of contract. Okay. And just as, and I have one more yeah, after this one, Madam President. My concern as a city council person is that city against risk and other liabilities. My one last item is going to go towards park funding. And so I've heard that this is about a park deal. This is not about a park deal. The documents that I have before me that they are being requested for a vote today is about a park deal. But there's a $2 million outstanding from Mr. Dick. I'm hoping we can hear from him. What are the options to fund this park if we do not close this deal today? We've talked about ARPA. We've talked about other general fund opportunities. Maybe there's some grants out there. What are the opportunities to fund this park if we do not close this deal and go to a second closing? Thank you, Council Member, for the chair. Um, we had upgraded and upgraded right now. I have a very long list of many of those uh, are provided by the Solid Lot. Uh, at this point, right now, I have no funds allocated for uh, Riverside Park other than the $2 million that has been allocated funds to complete Riverside that we have completed.
those rec those tennis courts are in horrendous condition and I wouldn't run on them or allow my child to play on them but we've been able to bring half a million dollars there and so if you were to say well councilman we're not going to be able to complete or make any additional investments in two Farwell or in two any of our other major parks or rec centers in the third district I would have a, I have a, a significant concern as would my residents who I represent but also we have to take the community's concerns into account and so I'm hoping that in the future and I can't afford to burn my own word I can't do it that's one thing second thing is I trusted the city when I agreed to that Riverside Park agreement where I went first and spent money property and effort I'm asking you to trust me and finish the city's end of the agreement and then we can move forward on other new agreements but it's not right in the list of additional things that I'm supposed to agree to in the next agreement keeps getting longer at the same time the agreement that's already been made and signed is held over my head that's not right that agreement needs to be done that chapter needs to be closed I agree with you there's many other chapters that need to be written in a positive way but we got to finish the one that we already got Madam President thank you all right Remember, so thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, hold up one, one second uh, Ms. Maroon I as, as you were speaking Are you done with me? I'm sorry yes yes okay no 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 go ahead stay right there um, as 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 you were talking a little bit earlier um, I received a text from somebody in the community and they said white privilege you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I mean that's what somebody said to me and, and I thought well I don't see it. I said well I don't see him that way you know how do you respond to that because I received a text um, from someone how do you respond to that Mr. Maroon well so far it's been all one way the improvements to Riverside Park, the demolition of the building, the kicking out of the tenant, the windows in the depot. Hey, I don't deny putting the windows in the depot when nobody was interested in the depot did add a little bit of rocket fuel to it mm -hmm. and help get a name for the depot, which attracted Ford Motor, and I benefited by that through a sale. But so far, it's been all one way. Okay. So the only privilege I'm asking for is the privilege to complete this agreement and finally get the part that I'm supposed to uh, get in the end that's the only privilege so then finally madam president I'll just say so you're saying that you need the city to act in good faith as well that's all what you're saying but are you willing to do what I asked you earlier about sitting down let, let us work through some things with you in the community let's let's get them to where they need to be you went on record saying that you're willing to do that um, absolutely and and in good faith we have been mm -hmm. but I don't I made a mistake I got to get this agreement done before I move on to the next one because otherwise it gets held over my head in the list of demands just gets longer each time we've got other issues that are unrelated to, to Riverside Park those need to be dealt with and I promise that we can deal with them and I promise that we can come to mutually positive outcomes okay but thank this, you mr. Maroon. that's thank, all that's good thank, thank you so much thank you thank, Madam you, President. thank you thank you so much and I want to kind of try to bring this to a close is there any additional questions or comments from council members okay I see Four or five more hands. Okay. <laughs> President Pro Tem Tate. Yep, mine's gonna be really quick. Yes. I know that there's we've been talking about uh, getting the bridge company to agree to a, uh, a benefits agreement. I know we, we've talked about uh, in, in the past session or past council about including a international uh, crossing in the community benefits ordinance uh, or creating an amendment to do so, as opposed to again, here we are, instead of asking for them to do such is there an option where council and I will ask this to the legislative policy division because you all have been working uh, on this in the past 
is there an option for council to uh, create an amendment or create a separate uh, ordinance that we put forward that would address that concern? And to me, again, I'm more trying to get to that kind of solution where we get out the, I don't want to do it, I don't think you should, we should do it, or it's, it's just mandated and we just move on. Director. Madam President. Mr. Contract. And so I think the question that I have is, one, where is the consideration? And um, I would also say, secondly, as this was explained to me about the ramification, the consequences, if we don't approve this, not only could the land uh, that Riverside Park has currently revert back to industrial use, but there also could be a potential where the land in which we're talking about on Jefferson could also, the judge could also decide to give that land to the brewery as well and fulfill that part of the contract. So, uh, Member Young, through the chair, uh, yeah, right. This, this is very, very basic, a million dollars, as Mr. Maroon made reference to. The transfer of the 4.71 acres to the city of Detroit, that's already taken place. The demolition of the building that was on the land prior to the uh, conveyance. The environmental cleanup that was done associated with the transfer of that land to the city of Detroit. So the consideration has been met. In exchange, the city of Detroit promised that it would grant back to the uh, Detroit International Bridge Company, the 3.71 acres that is a part of the resolution before you today. So the contract has been, uh, it was well designed, consideration was well documented, all of the condition precedents to, to the second closing have taken place. And while it is absolutely true that the discussions that we've been having are all speculative about what damages the judge might award. Member Benson has constantly pressed me to talk about the risks associated that the city of Detroit might encounter, and they are considerable, uh, in, even if, uh, uh, based on the circumstances and the conversations you've been having with the bridge company today, that it is likely uh, that these conversations are going to continue for some time going forward. At a certain point, were conditions to change, uh, the fact that we are in current breach of the 2015 land exchange agreement places the city in potential jeopardy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, President. All right, so we are going to, uh, we're still more, more. Um, what's my level of confidence that we are not going to take the $2 million from this closing and instead of putting it into a park, put it into the general fund? How is this money going to be booked by the city of Detroit on the accounting side? Distribution for a restricted purpose. So there is no opportunity for this money to be spent for any other purpose than the park. And Riverside Park. And, um, excuse me, and Riverside Park. That's okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Was there any other hand before we move um, forward? Just, just, quick, just a yes, quick question, Madam President. Um, yeah, I was just <clears throat> the the whole ordinance thing that mem member table. Motion has been made for LPD to make that request to mm -hmm. amend the current ordinance to include the um, bridge language for a CBO process. Are there any objections? All right, hearing none, that motion is approved. Madam President, yes. Motion to end debate. <laughs> motion to end debate. Objection. Motion has been made to end debate. Any objections to the motion? Objection. Council member uh, Santiago Ramiro is an objection. Hearing no further objections, that motion is approved. And so there will be no further um, discussion on this motion. Excuse me, excuse me, Miss Miss Darrell. Excuse me. Excuse me, Miss Darrell. Um, pro Tem Tate, did you move this for approval? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Motion has been made uh, for approval. Roll call, Madam President. Okay. One second. Um, okay, yep. Motion has been made for approval for line item 17.4. Uh, roll call has been requested, Mr. Chair. I'm excuse me, Mr. Clark. Lord. <laughs> I'll take it. Councilmember Waters. Oh, 
Who did you call? Member Waters. Oh, yes. Council Member Whitfield Callaway. Yes. Council Member Young. Yes. Council President Sheffield. Yes. Council Member Benson. Yes. Council Member Durhall. Yes. Council Member Johnson. No. Council Member Santiago Romero. No. Council President Pro Tim Tate. No. Six yeas, three nays. The um, resolution is approved. And uh, thank you all for being here. Um, Mr. Maroon, I just wanted to make sure if you can come back um, because the discussions are going to continue. Um, and so we can just get some commitment to uh, the continued negotiations with the Hubbard Richard uh, community um, and what that process will look, out, look like and possibly reporting out to this body, whether it be quarterly, I don't want to overdo it and say monthly, but I do want to have. Can I hit the bathroom? Do what you got to do. Okay. Well, I need you here. Uh, they're going down. They're going I'm, I'm going outside soon. All right. I'll see you out the front. By the uh, statue? Yeah. Towards the back. Oops, sorry. Back. Come to the back. Thanks. Sorry about that. What's your reaction? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about it. Uh, finally, we get to complete the agreement, which has been positive in almost every respect. Uh, the biggest one, of course, is the depot. I mean, this is the agreement that called for us to spend a few million dollars putting windows in the depot and fixing it up to that degree. And obviously that paid off selfishly for us, but very much so for the city and congratulations to Ford Motor as well. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask this question. I mean, they want to do a community benefits agreement. They came in after this deal that they came into kind of vogue. Sure. Um, are you looking or are you, are you interested in doing a CBA for this neighborhood? I don't know about that in particular, but we're we're definitely committed to speaking with with the community and and the city and trying to work out other issues that don't have anything to do with Riverside Park. But I want to. There's positive outcomes to be had. Okay. Do, do you are you still looking to, to to do the second span over the river? Not right now. Really? No. No. The Gordy Howe is going to be a great bridge, and the Ambassador Bridge will will last for another 75 or 100 years and. I think that's all we need for the foreseeable future. Are you going to put be putting money into the ambassador, try and make it uh, shored up a little bit? It is kind of already <laughs> done that. We're almost done. Oh, really? Right. Okay. We're almost done. The ambassador bridge should be in tip-top shape in almost every respect by the end of the summer. Wow. Okay. Let me ask this question then: um, If you're not looking to do the second span, what do you need that that parcel for? Then, I mean, I know you're completing the contract, but what do you now? Right. What do you do with that parcel? Well, as you know, Rod, we, we negotiated to get that parcel so that we could build a second span. So now what are we going to do with it? It's just going to be a really nice looking piece of land. Cool. All right. Well, I'll just say, man, oh, man, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Rod. Thank you so much.